and it's not complicated, and it's not something that requires a degree in biology or 10 years of struggle and failure. It is something that a brand new first time fish keeper can do and be successful. Well, hello, come right on in. You're at Father Fish. Is Father Fish. Why? in the world do we need to even consider the possibility of creating something that is an attempt to replicate the world that fish actually live in? Why do we want to do that? I mean, we have all of this technology, don't we? We have chemistry. We've got an industry that is so deep that it measures the precise elements that are put into the food that we feed our fish. We have equipment that's capable of filtering down to a micron. We have substrate that provides nutrients to our plants. We have equipment that will put CO2 into our water column and measure everything there is imaginable to measure. Why in the world would we abandon all of that for the sake of what? What? Put some mud and sand in a tank and let it go? Well, as a matter of fact. And here's the issue, friends. And you are my friends. We are friends because we are all attempting to do the very same thing which is to provide an environment that will keep our living creatures, our plants, our animals, our invertebrates alive and healthy. Isn't that what is absolutely most important? Alive for more than a day or two or a week or so or a month or a few months, but indefinitely for years indefinitely until they die of just falling apart because they're so old and decrepit they can't hold it together anymore. We have been told that we can have that if we apply all of the science and all of the technology that is available to us. Here's the problem. Nobody is able to do that within the first week or month or year or generally even decade. It requires substantial experience. It requires failing again and again and again in order to finally begin to piece together what we need to do to use all of this technology in a way that will actually keep our animals alive. Sadly, 90% of the people who get a fish tank and put some fish in it and watch them die and then go out and get some more and put them in the tank and watch them die and then go out and get some more and put them in the tank and watch them die are unwilling to do it a fourth time and they put their tank on the curb to get rid of it. Bottom line 90%. That's by actual count. 90%. So, for 90% of the people trying to become a fish hobbyist, it doesn't work. It is an abject, absolute failure. The 10% who succeed, I think generally speaking, they are the fanatics, like myself, and like probably you, some of you, who will do whatever is required, including going without gas in the car and food on the table, to be able to figure out how to keep those animals alive. And by God, we're going to do it. And by God, we do it. At what cost? At what cost? There is another way. There genuinely actually is another way. 
and it's not complicated, and it's not difficult, and it's not something that requires a degree in biology, or 10 years of struggle and failure. It is something that a brand new first time fish keeper can do and be successful and maintain a system that will keep their plants growing, keep their system clean, keep their fish alive and healthy for years to come. It really is possible. And it's not something that's based on me or any person. It's based on nature. It's based on doing what is already working, what is already successful. Do you know that the first fish keepers, serious fish keepers, who began keeping fish in aquariums in the 1800s, they had no electricity, so there were no filters, no pumps, no lights, no heater. There were no prepared foods available. They had nothing. None of the technology that we have today. None of it. You know how they built their tanks? They started by learning how to cut glass. That's right. There are still those who do that today. Learning how to make the aquarium. And then what? Then falling in love with the animals in the brook or in the tide pool and sitting hour after hour after hour just watching and becoming so enchanted, so enamored, so filled with joy and excitement about what you were seeing that you just had to try to take some of it home. So what did you do? What did I do as a little eight-year-old, nine-year-old child? I figured out how to catch some crayfish and some of the little darters. And I scooped out some dirt and got a bucket and filled it with water. And I had a little tank. I scooped out some dirt and I put it in it. I leveled it out. And then I carefully added water to it without stirring it all up. And then I put a little crayfish in, a couple little fish, some other things I found, some plants. That was it. And I'll tell you what, until I started doing this kind of system, that was the most successful tank I ever had. Because those little animals lived the entire summer. Now, isn't that what you are looking for? A way to be able to do something that is very simple, very straightforward, very natural, that's not complicated, that's going to keep your fish alive and healthy and happy. If fish are happy, my fish are happy. By the way, I just want to mention a little fact here. See this tank? This tank is a 30 gallon long, half the height of a 55. It is a jungle of plants. Now, I like that kind of decor. I like a jungle. I like thick, dense plants. Not well designed, not beautifully artistic. I mean, they're nice and I like them and all, but it's not what I like to do. I like to do this. And I'm adding plants to it all the time, adding new plants in. This tank has been set up for 22 years. The only major water changes it's had was when I moved it and I carried half of the water with me. I've never done a major water change. Occasionally I'll do 10%, maybe once a year or so. I do top it off regularly with the same water I put in it. Now, here's what I wanted to tell you. How many fish are in this tank? There are now, as of today, more than 100 fish in this tank. You won't see them all at once. You'll see 10, 15, maybe 20. 100 fish in this tank. They live in every strata in the tank. There are some fish you absolutely never see. They're down in the plants. They're feeding along the bottom, the little formosa that are just the tiniest little live bearer, less than half an inch long. The males are so tiny. They're shrimp in here. They're probably 25 shrimp. By this time, there may be many more. 
I almost never see a shrimp, but I know they're in there. If I go through with a net that's got a scoop in there, I'll get a net full. That's the kind of tank I like to have. That's what this is, and that's what I'm offering you. A chance to do something that will fulfill your vision of what you want to really create as an aquarium. Now, if you're into artistry, that's fine. We have a woman working with us over on our Father Fish Shoal. Tisha is her name. She is a brilliant artist, an aquascaper, who uses very technical techniques to be able to achieve a perfect, artistic, aesthetically pleasing aquarium. This ain't pretty. It ain't trying to be pretty. It's trying to be a jungle. Jungles aren't pretty. So I welcome you to join with us and learn to do what we've learned to do. It isn't complicated. It's really quite simple. And if you're willing to pay attention and willing to learn, we'll teach them to you. But if you'll do it this way, you'll get this kind of success and so much more. All of the pictures you've been watching in this video, all of the videos you've been watching are of people who are doing precisely this doing a natural environment, and they are thrilled, as I hope you will be too. Join us. Take the leap into the unknown. Turn your back on the big box store and all their stuff. Take a walk out into nature, into the real world, and learn how to bring it into your home and install it in your tank. Thank you for watching. It is my pleasure, my love, and I will see you later. Bye for now.